David Pollack and the College Game Day crew will be live from Tuscaloosa this weekend at 9 a.m. on ESPN. Let me start with the role of the head coach. With Nick Saban not there, David, um, how important is it having your head coach there, the role that he plays on game day as opposed to what happens during the week? Not every head coach is made the same, um, first of all, which is which is important to know. But Nick Saban, is, he is Mr. Detail. Everything runs through Nick Saban. Like, Coin toss, Dan. Who's going out there? Which <laughs> side they're going to defend? Two point plays. By the way, warm ups. He's looking at kickers on the hash. Like he's he made it from X. He ran this play from there. I mean, he's literally as involved as any coach in all of college football. So to answer your poll question, I literally would put Nick Saban at the top of that list. So them not having that, and that's not that's just from a schematic standpoint, right? I'm not even talking about from a motivation standpoint. You've seen him get after his guys, and his guys know like. You better show up and you better do your job. Now, you know, dad's not over your shoulder over there looking at you. It's, it, it allows you to relax a little bit, maybe not play as, as energetic and maybe not be as tense. And by the way, he also puts his coaches on notice. All those dudes know they better bring it too. So this is a huge loss, man. It's not just a game manager. This isn't Bobby Bowden that oversaw everything late in his career or Joe Pa. This is a guy that's in, – everything in that building goes through Nick Saban. You imagine Saban at home during this game, dude? No way. No, he ain't gonna be at home. By the way, I'm telling you, we need to have a contest. Whoever finds him in the stadium, <laughs> in the box, on the sidelines, like the, the fine Nick Saban game. He's he's so he's so controlling, and and he's got his hand on everything. I just can't. And the rules stipulate, by the way, that he can't have any communication with them, so he can't go back and forth. Um, now, listen, it doesn't say anything about text message, but he can't he can't have a phone conversation and have a direct line or direct contact. And I I don't see it happening, Dan. I, it's, it's, he's going to find a way to make that happen. Do you think he's going to be in communication with somebody on the sidelines during the game? Yes, I, I think. Listen, it doesn't say anything about text message in the bylaws. So I think he can text. But, um, you know, I, I still think it's think about this game and how it was decided the last two times Georgia faced Alabama. Alabama put in backup quarterbacks. Nick Saban had to make that call on the sidelines. You got to look in people's eyes and make that call. So yeah, he's going to have to have more trust than he ever has. Um, Sarkeesian obviously is a head, has been a head coach in the past, so he's kind of got some experience. But I, I think Nick will find a way to make sure that he's got his hands on everything and he's he's making calls and he's trying to put his team in the best position to succeed. But I think it's going to be difficult because the rules state you can't. But it's the SEC. I mean, the rules are kind of optional down south, bro. And, and speaking from experience, having played in the SEC. Yes, 100%. Rules, <laughs> rules don't always apply. I mean, it's not, you know, it's not always, it's not always a game. But if Georgia's going to get him, this is like you're running out of excuses here, David. Yeah, but you know what, though? Here's the thing. Even if Georgia wins, you know, Nick's, Nick's assist, he's, uh, he's undefeated against all of his assistants. Does this count? Like, Nick wasn't there. <laughs> so it really doesn't matter. You know, it, it's interesting, too, for the playoff picture, Dan, because this game really doesn't matter. As long as this is a close game and, and neither team gets boat raced, you're still very much in the playoff picture. You're still – you still got a rematch in December, probably the way things are looking where you can go at it again and, and both those teams will be alive. But um, no, if George, if you're a Georgia fan, you're like, all right, well, how, how much I, I had Georgia fans. Obviously, I went to University of Georgia fans texting me. Well, wait a minute. He was close to his defense all weekend. Do we need to quarantine <laughs> them? And so I think if you're, if you're Georgia, you're definitely like, wait a minute, if it's going to happen, this has to be the year. Well, also, I think we have to keep an eye out on more positive tests at Alabama because Coach Saban's one of those, I'm on the field, I'm involved with the players here and with other yeah. coaches. So I, I don't know if they're tested today. How many times are you tested be, you know, during the course of a week during the season? Every school is different, but Alabama's testing every day. Okay. So, uh, and so here's the thing, by the way, they're the only two, you know, the AD and Nick Saban are the two that tested positive, no players. Um, but it could be a false positive. What if it comes back today and, and it's not positive? And, and we just had 24 hours of madness and craziness. And, and now Nick's going to be back at practice and things could be back to normal. So the more, here's the thing. If you're not uh, like, all coaches across college football, Dan, they read Nick Saban's books and they read all these books of these coaches and how they think and formulate. 
Well, this year isn't about that. This year, you better be able to adapt. You better be able to improvise. You better be able to come up with some stuff on the fly on your own. You better be practicing people at multiple positions. And you better have plans for when coaches aren't there. I mean, you saw it with Mike Norvell from Florida State. He didn't get to coach the game. You saw Virginia Tech's defensive coordinator last two weeks didn't get to be at the game. You better be able to adapt and improvise this year more than ever. He's David Pollack, former uh, NFL player. And uh, when are you going into the College Football Hall of Fame? Well, it was it was supposed to be this year, but they're not doing the uh, the induction ceremony because of all the stuff that's going on. So I think next year they'll um, if they guess they ran out of people to put in, so they're going to put me in next year. No, oh, stop it! What are you benching these days? <laughs> Can you bench Nothing. more than Fowler? A hundred percent. Yes. Come on, bro. I don't I, know. I, I better be able to. I, listen, I know Fowler swole, but I mean, I, if I can't bench more than Fowler, I, I, I think I would have problems. But I, I don't throw around the heavy weight anymore, Dan. I don't need that stuff anymore. I'm Good. more of a reps guy. We're, we're, we're done with that. Fowler is filling the sleeves, man. He's he's strong. He's stout. He's always taking pride in that. You know, he's got to look good in that suit, man. He's got to fill that puppy oh. out. Is North Carolina for real? Well, I mean, you watch their offense and you go, yeah, they just dropped 50 on Virginia Tech, even though half of Virginia Tech's defense wasn't there. Um, but their defense gave up 40. So I, I, think they're, I think they're a team that is – they found their quarterback. They've got a lot of skill. They've got a really good offense. But they're not a team that's recruited an elite level for a bunch of years. So they're really good, but they're, I don't think they're on the level of Clemson's and these playoff teams that have been recruited at a high level for a long time. But they don't play Clemson this year. Well, they might play them in the ACC championship yeah, game. but they got Notre then, Dame. They got Notre Dame. And listen, Notre Dame's in a position where Notre Dame's recruited better and been um, better for longer. So I think Notre Dame's a team that could obviously get them too. But I'm interested to see the ACC with Notre Dame. And we say, hey, you know what Clemson did last week, right? Miami's like, hey, Miami's coming, <laughs> Miami's coming. Clemson's like, shut up, sit down. Like, we're not ready to hear from you. So it's going to be interesting. Hopefully Notre Dame will give – you know, Clemson a game, and we'll start to see them get challenged at some point. Because right now it's the ACC. It's kind of like Clemson. Okay, then you just push people in the face and tell them to shut up and sit down. Yeah, and I, I, I'm i going to guess if Notre Dame played Clemson now, I think they play in two or three weeks, Clemson's probably going to be close to a two-touchdown favorite. Yeah. Double-digit favorite, Dame, I'm going to guess. Yeah, and, and Notre Dame had a game and then three weeks off, and and, and so they're, they're still kind of finding themselves with new weapons. But I tell you what, their offensive line, Notre Dame, is one of the best in the country. Um, and Ian Book has a lot of experience, so you you would hope they would make some plays. But I also said that about De'Eric King in Miami, that they were going to make some plays. And Brent Venables and that Clemson defense, just next guy up, next freak up, next five-star, putting them in there, and they look pretty daggum good. What would your philosophy be if you're a Big Ten school or a Pac-12 school to try to impress the voters? Just do, just play and try to win as, by as much as you can. But I, here's the thing. We're seeing games getting canceled this week. So remember, the Big Ten has 10 consecutive games in a row. So is that going to happen? I mean, you're not going to have I, – I think you're not – I don't think you're going to get through Corona without having something come up, and maybe that's two weeks of your season. The Pac-12 has seven games consecutive. So listen, this is a year that it's crazy enough as it is. Just play really good football. Maybe you got a chance, but – I don't understand why the, the, the expansion conversation isn't more. I get pissed every week. We talk about – I'm going to bring it up to Reese every week on game day. He's going to ignore me every single week. But in the year of 2020, why the heck would we not expand the playoffs? We don't know as much about the teams. We don't have as much information. We didn't have as much spring ball and fall practice. So let's, let's expand it, get a few more teams in there, because now we know we got it right and the best team's going to win. But I'm with you on that, David, because especially this year where you need to raise money, you need to make money because you have athletic departments that have been really decimated here. And if you could add four more schools to this, I know we always look at the integrity of the bowl games. Well, you can still have bowl games here, but if you're not going to have fans, we don't worry about filling the stadiums uh, of these bowl games. You could still have the Fiesta Bowl as part of you know the playoff process here, there just wouldn't be fans because we were worried about, well, how many games can fans go to during normal times? But, man, expanding it to at least eight this year, I, I, I think this is a – I think these college athletic departments need it. It's the perfect year. It's the perfect storm. Um, and, and listen, we don't, we're not saying we have to keep it that way. No. But 
in, in a year where everything's changing and everything's been so crazy, why not expand it a little bit and get more teams in there? And, and, it, and it makes everything, yeah, raise more money, more TV rights. Yeah. So our company won't buy more of that. Yes, please. I mean, and put it on air. Like, more advertising dollars, like more find a way to make why, more money. Why is for the why sport. is Reese Davis not giving you the platform you deserve? Who is Reese Davis? <laughs> Reese, by God, and he's Davis, an Arkansas he guy, so he doesn't know anything about football. Reese is Reese is the man, though. So I and, he, and by the way, he's my point guard, Dan. So I don't get touches okay. unless I make sure I keep my point guard happy. So I can't, I can't, I can't slam Reese. And now he's an Arkansas guy, right? He's an Alabama guy. Oh, Russell yeah. Shoals. Yeah. Oh, he graduated from University of Alabama. Oh, he did. Wow. Yeah. He probably wants a two-team playoff every year. <laughs> Alabama, Alabama, <Clemson>. and <laughs> Alabama, and <laughs> and I. Why did I think Reese was an Arkan? I apologize to Reese. Man, that, that's I really insulted him there. Forgot that he went to Alabama. <laughs> you know what? But back then with Reese, they weren't winning, so Reese didn't talk about Alabama back then. No, the, he didn't the care Mike about Shula him. years, he didn't bring up. I never heard from Reese back then. Nope. Now, but the last ten years, I've had to hear from him. So I'm, <laughs> you got out at the right time. David, uh, safe travels there to Tuscaloosa. Game day will be there uh, coming up this weekend. Great to talk to you again. Thank you. Appreciate it, Dan. That's uh, David Pollock. The uh, college game day crew will be in Tuscaloosa this weekend, at, uh, starting at 9 a.m. Eastern.